Howdy. Well, welcome to Christ Memorial this morning. I'm Reverend Jason Marino. Happy to have you all here with us today. And we're going to go ahead and get started. We'll be singing hymn 906, O Day of Rest and Gladness. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you all here today. Why don't you look around you, say hello to your neighbor. Please greet one another. Well, and welcome to everybody joining us online. We're glad to have you all here with us. Uh, just any opportunity that you have to come and join us down here, we're happy to have you. A uh, couple things wanted to point out. Um, after uh, worship today, uh, 1 uh, to 4 p.m. this afternoon, 1 to 4 p.m. this afternoon, we're going to be at Memorial Assistance Ministries. Okay, so with this is that we're going to be there helping them to get ready for one of their major sales of the year. This is actually one of their main fundraising opportunities there. So uh, please join us. We'll be over there on Blaylock Road. Uh, if you have questions, you can talk with Marlene Sturl. The contact info is here. Also, next week, and then two weeks after that, so June 9th and June 23rd. We'll be having membership assemblies here to talk about the budget as well as uh, changes to the bylaws. So a few tweaks in order to be able to work out uh, different ways that the pastor and the different committees and ministries are able to work together in doing the ministry here at the church. So that'll be at 11.45 a.m., okay? 11.45 a.m., so grab some brunch if need be and be able to attend that next week and the 23rd. 
Also, the 23rd, uh, we'll be having the church picnic, so that'll be following our VBS week, okay? So then there'll be opportunities for you all to uh, grab your swimsuit and go down the water slide. I can tell how many people in the choir are excited to get on that water slide. That's going to be awesome. All right, so please feel free to join us for that, and you can get a hold of Annie Kelly if you have some questions on that. And by the way, for VBS, if you're planning to volunteer, haven't had a chance to do so yet, go ahead and get a hold of Cheryl Angel and uh, let her know. She's finalizing all the numbers and everything, and we're really excited to have our kiddos that particular week, June uh, 18th through the 21st with that. Um, with those announcements, let us continue with our worship. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Let us take time in silence with God, knowing that he is merciful and that he has given us his grace by Christ Jesus. And let's come to him and say, God, I know that I am in need of your mercy, and I pray that you will forgive me as you have promised to do. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ, in his stead and by his authority, I declare to you that your sins are hereby forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will open up to Psalm 81. We'll be going through verses 1 through 10. We'll be chanting those responsibly. I'll be starting off with the evens, and you'll be responding with the, uh, sorry, I totally said that wrong. I'll be starting off with the odd verses, and you'll be responding with the evens, and you can look at the little marks that are on the verses to see when we'll be changing the note with each of those verses. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. For it is a statute for Israel, a just decree of the God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph when he went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a language I had not known. I release your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O oh my people, while I admonish you. O oh Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. 
I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. Eternal God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is our true Sabbath rest. Help us to keep each day holy by receiving his word of comfort, that we may find our rest in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. large print so I don't have to use my readers. <laughs> the first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 5 
beginning at the 12th verse and can be found on page 150 of your pew Bible. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at the fifth verse, and can be found on page 965 of your pew Bible. What we proclaim is not ourselves but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you so much. Please rise for the gospel. Our gospel reading can found, be found on page 838 of your pew Bible. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Starting with the 23rd verse. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields. And as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what, Jesus, what David did when he was in need and was hungry? He and those who were with him. How he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us join together with the people of God throughout the centuries to proclaim our faith in Father, Son, and Spirit with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we join to sing 849, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. I don't even know what I'm doing with this. May the Lord of the Sabbath bless us this morning as we take this time to be in worship, to be with the only one who can truly grant us grace, hope, new life. And may this Sabbath be a time of rest. 
not so that we can avoid everything that is needed, but so that we can focus on what is necessary. Lord God, grant us your grace this morning and your peace. Amen. Well, howdy. Well, glad to have you all in worship this morning. Uh, every time that a storm blows through here nowadays, it feels like we're just on edge as to whether or not we're going to be okay. So, I don't know, but so far it seems like we're doing okay, at least for this weekend. So, we shall leave it at that. Now, as you all uh, know from previous sermons, is that there are three festivals that I especially try to go to in the greater Houston area, all right? You got to try to make sure that you uh, end up going to the Renaissance Festival at some point. You got to get your soup and bread, your turkey leg, okay? And uh, a little bit of mead goes a long, long way, all right? Now, second, you got to make sure you go to rodeo, all right? And, and I know that not everybody's into country music, but they have other artists there as well. I, when I first saw MC Hammer at the rodeo, that really threw me for a loop. But hey, it is a lot of fun, and you got to get deep fried Oreos somewhere in there, okay? A deep fried Twinkie, I feel like, is kind of defeating the point, but yeah, it's all good. And the third festival that I try to go to every year is Comic Palooza. It's very, very important, okay? This is basically the nerd paradise, okay? Now, you have not just all these comic book characters and cartoon characters, but also these sci-fi actors and action stars and all these different characters and people. And apparently, they have these areas where, like, little kids can go with their plastic swords and, like, you know, play fight with each other and everything. And apparently, they have other areas so that big kids can have their big uh, plastic swords and go fighting with each other and everything. I mean, it is whatever it is, and I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm 44. Now, which one do I, I mean, because I could probably take the little kids. I don't know. But, you know, you got to make sure that you go and you have a lot of fun, and, and it's great. This year, I did not get to dress up, unfortunately. Just a lot going on, but I will try again for next year, I swear, okay? But one of the big things that stood out was that they did have Back to the Future there. They had Michael J. Fox, and they had, what, Christopher Lloyd as well, and they were there for a panel. I really, really wanted to get a chance to go and get a picture with them, but apparently either I was in a wedding or I was in the middle of worship and I could not get to either, but I made it to the panel and it was a lot of fun. Right. But while I was walking along throughout the different displays, I look over and I see this, this, this brand new, like, like in its original box, Optimus Prime. Okay, now, for those of you who do not know, it was this cartoon, came out, I think it was late 84, early 85, somewhere in there, lasted for a few years. Robots that transform into vehicles, okay, and a, a, a big thing for kids that were my age and everything. And I look at it, and I see on there, it's $60. And I'm thinking, man, that is a great price for this particular toy. I've seen these things online and I go up and I'm like, and I'm trying to understand because it was 60 and this other toy, not really quite as important, was 70. And I'm, I'm trying to find out from them, why is it that this toy is cheaper than this other one here? And they said, I, I don't think you understand, sir. That's not the price for the toy. That's the price for the plastic display box that we put it in. I'm, I was like, I'm, I'm, excuse me? And, and I look in through this whole, like, this whole booth, all of these really good vintage toys that are up there, and all they were selling was the plastic boxes. And I'm like, what in the world? You're supposed to put it in this plastic case to keep it safe. And I'm like, Th that's, that's great, but if you're charging 60 bucks just for the box, I don't even know how much the toy would be. But what really stood out to me, though, is that this whole booth, the whole focus, was just on the packaging. Right? The whole thing was looking at the framework, and that there was no opportunity to get to the toy, the content on the inside. And see, this idea of how oftentimes we can get so focused on the framework on the outside, the packaging, the context, is that we can oftentimes lose sight of what's actually on the inside. See, the thing is, is that we see this focus on context, this on framework, perspective. When we see our gospel today, 
with Jesus and his disciples. You see, Jesus and his disciples, they had a lot of work to do. They're going from town to town. They're walking from here to there. And as they're walking along, they end up walking through this field of grain, and they grab some of the, the heads of the grain that were off the stalks. And they're munching on the kernels that are there off of the heads of grain. Now, the thing is, is that they were hungry, and they just grabbed this. This is not them taking the grains and going to a local mill and grinding it up and baking a bread and selling the bread or anything like that. They're just grabbing what's there and munching on it. But you see, the Pharisees that end up seeing them, they end up focusing on what in their mind, when they look at it, they see an offense to the law. Because what was the day? It was the Sabbath. And so instead of just realizing that people are just grabbing something and munching on it, is that in their minds, they see someone that is offending what their view of the Sabbath is supposed to be. But in reality, what is the Sabbath actually meant to be? The Sabbath is meant to be a time where we rest from our normal labors and we spend time with God. And what is it the disciples were doing? They were walking along with the Son of God, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. You see, they were doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing. But the Pharisees couldn't see past this framework of how they had built their community. But you see, even if, even if there might have been in their minds some confusion as to what was happening, the truth is, is that people trying to protect the Sabbath or the laws that they had in place, there were often times where they made exceptions for various circumstances. There was not always a time to protect everything at all costs. For example, as it mentions, is that when David, the king, had been running from Saul, you see, David had been anointed by God to be king, but Saul did not want to let that go. And Saul was chasing after David. David ends up going to the priests and is saying, we, are hung we have not had any food. We have nothing. Me and my men, give us of the showbread, the bread of the presence, so that we can eat of it. You see, this bread was meant to be something that was freshly baked, and placed before God. And that when it had cooled down and was starting to get a little bit older, is that then they would pull it off, and while they replaced it with fresh bread, the priests would end up eating of that. You see, having the bread in the presence of God is something that has reached back throughout the Old Testament. So technically, David asking for this bread, while it wasn't this terrible, horrible thing of trying to offend the altar of God, technically he was breaking a law that this bread was supposed to be eaten by the priests. And they came up with different rules for, well, are you clean or unclean and all these different things. But technically, they were making an exception for David. And you see, with this is that we want to ask this question, why is it that sometimes people make exceptions? Now, why would we see that with David? You see, no one there was questioning about David and what happened with the showbread. But why is this? Because David in their society was seen as a hero. And whatever David did was not necessarily something that they wanted to go after. But you see, instead of acknowledging that David, a flawed human being, had sinned, and that maybe they should look to the one who is bringing the presence of God to show them the way, is instead they had their back against David and they were focused on Jesus. And you see, the thing is, is that even Jesus, kind of a tongue-in-cheek sort of a comment, ends up even asking about the priests themselves. Technically, all the priests are blaspheming against the, 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 the temple. And why is that? Because they're all working on the Sabbath. So technically, if you were to look at it that way, they're all doing what was wrong. 
Now, of course, that's meant to be tongue-in-cheek. It was meant to make a point. But here they are trying to pick and choose who or what embodies what they want instead of looking inside in light of God's will. Instead of asking what it is that Jesus and his disciples are actually doing and, what's, and who it is that this actually is, is instead they're focused on protecting their ideas, their framework, their context, their heroes. And you see, this is something that we want to have in mind when we see what we, what we learn about with our epistle lesson. The fact that there are treasures in jars of clay. You see, whenever we see this idea of a clay jar, is that we're supposed to see something that is meant to be frail. Something that is not meant to be strong and sturdy and and on which you would put your weight, your hope. It's not the jar that's supposed to matter. And the thing is, is that oftentimes the Christians in this context, they feel like clay jars. Why? Because they can feel how weak and uncertain that they truly are. What it is to be struggling, to feel perplexed by what's happening around them, to sometimes feel abandoned. But the thing is, is that oftentimes we spend so long focusing on the jar instead of seeking out the treasure that's meant to be within. See, that's the thing about the Christian life, is that it's not meant to be safe and sound. It's not meant to be stable, steady ground in this world. This world is not meant to be a place of safety for us. Not our faith. You see, that's the thing about a jar of clay, is that the packaging of what God is doing is not meant to be the focus. See, oftentimes we may take the framework for what it is that we feel we trust, what it is that we feel that we turn to, and sometimes we try to strengthen it and protect it. As if somehow whatever it is that we feel safe in in this world is meant to be the thing that we protect. But we're not supposed to glaze the jar of clay. We're not supposed to set it in the fire and harden it. We're not supposed to protect the vessel at all costs. We're not supposed to take the packaging in which we see what is good and right and protect that at all costs. Sometimes we are actually supposed to destroy the jar of clay. Look back at David. What is it that David actually did? See, David is the one who went and was staring at a woman who is trying to take care of her uncleanness that naturally happened every month. And he ends up sending his guard to go and get her and bring her and have what he wants with her. You don't get to say no to the king at that moment. And then when the consequences of a child come to bear, what does he do? He finds a way to either try to blame Uriah, or he then ends up killing him, the man that was the woman's husband. And then not only that, what does God need to do? God has to allow the consequence. Is that that child is not allowed to live. But even more than that, is that David's household can't even stay in a sense of stability. His firstborn is over there trying to overthrow him and ends up dying in battle against his own father. Or more than that, is that what does David decide to do? Does he trust in God and protecting the nation of of, of Israel? No, he's going to go and take a census just to make sure that they know how many people they have ready so that they know who they could truly conquer and tackle. And what does God do? God punishes the entire nation for his decision. And 70,000 people die. See, the thing is, is that 
David was not allowed to actually build the temple because of who he had been, a man of war, a man with blood on his hands. But even then later, that legacy, it doesn't even continue the way as expected anyway. Was David anointed as king? Absolutely. But even with that, that reign could not continue as is. Because not only do we see his son going and bringing in a multitude of idols from all around and allowing all these other nations to start up their practices, but even the kings thereafter begin to fall into that as well. And there are even some that went back into sacrificing children or bringing in statues into the temple. See, the thing is, is that sometimes the framework in which we see what God is doing is supposed to come to an end. I, I had been given these, um, these, these toys, these action figures at one point. And in the midst of moving from place to place, the box that they were in kept getting wrinkled up, kept getting like torn, a piece here and a piece there. I'd have to try to put a piece of tape on this spot here or try to flatten it out on that spot there. And I wanted to try to preserve it because I wanted those figures to be in this original packaging. Until finally, I pulled it out <laughs> of one of my, my moving boxes and I look at it and I'm like, what in the world is this ugly mess? And so what I did is I took off the packaging and I put the figures up by themselves. And they looked absolutely perfect. And that's also the truth about why I didn't go dressed up as anything to Comic Palooza. I had absolutely nothing worth wearing. Is that something that a guy says? But you see, the thing is, is that whenever we look at what a package is, is that it's supposed to be frail. Because what is the actual treasure? And how often do we actually lose sight of what truly matters? Because the reality is that there's only one Lord of the Sabbath. There is nothing and no one else that is supposed to be in that place of, of honor and protection. But also, why is it important that Jesus be the Lord of the Sabbath. Not just who is Lord of the Sabbath, but why is it that Jesus needs to be Lord of the Sabbath, where the emphasis lies? Because this is meant to be a time to stop fighting and to go back to the one who actually does make all things new. The one who actually does make things right in himself. The one who is actually the real treasure. And honestly, we, as people, we need to refocus. We need to get our priorities straight again. We need to ask what it is that we've actually been fighting about in the world around us. Why is it that there has been so much strife and so much struggle? We need to stop worshiping mindsets, perspectives, people, heroes, and ways of doing things. We need to stop putting the structure up on the pedestal. The thing is, is that the Pharisees ended up being so focused on what offended them that the following verses, it even points out that Jesus has to deal with them just to even heal someone who is in need. But the thing is, is that you are also not Lord of the Sabbath. The thing is, is that who you have been also needs to be destroyed. Because the reality is that we oftentimes put ourselves in that place. When in reality, is that the actual Lord of the Sabbath willingly and humbly allowed himself to be broken 
is that as much as we do what we can to protect the way that we see and try to protect the world, is that in reality, is that the one that actually brings hope willingly allowed himself to be broken for us. Because the reality is that broken vessels are okay to be broken. The treasure of grace and hope and mercy is still intact. What God has provided for us by Jesus Christ does not change when our context and our world and the things that we have fought for fade away. Because that grace was given for us. Thing is, is that I know that the world is a bit of a struggle today. And I know that there are a lot of things and a lot of people that want you to be on your guard constantly and worried and frustrated and to see all of the enemies that are around about you. But what I have for you today is that no matter how perplexed you may feel, that Jesus is still Lord of all, no matter what that context may be. So please, don't give up everything of value just to keep your broken vessels. Thanks be to God. Please rise for prayer. Lord God, as we come to you today on this celebration of Sabbath, Lord God, we ask that you would continue to be our Lord. Lord God, we know that there are so many ways in which we continue to fight for what it is that matters in our lives and in our hearts that are not about you. God, we ask that you would give us perspective. Lord God, we ask that you would give us mercy and grace for the people that are around us. And Lord God, for the times whenever we feel that we are beaten down and that we are struggling, Lord God, help us to remember that you are still the one giving us light and life and strength. Lord God, help us to turn to you, the one who is willing to be broken for us. And Lord God, even whenever we can feel how frail we are, Lord God, help us to take joy in the treasure that is inside us the treasure that is your grace and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, for all of those who are doing all sorts of work in the community around us to promote the well-being and, and, and the, the strength and, and the, the health of everyone around them, Lord, we ask that you would bless them and strengthen them now and always. Lord God, we have had storm after storm that keeps going through. And God, we know that there are those who keep responding each and every time. And Lord, there are so many times where we may check on each other here or there. And then after a while, we just assume, uh, is it even worth it to even go any further? Lord God, we know that there are those who do. We know that there are those who continue time after time to care for and to love on those who are around them. So Lord God, for the times whenever we realize how weak we are and the times whenever we are struggling, we ask that you would give them strength and that they would inspire us to do the same. Lord God, whether those, they be those who are responding to fire or medical or, or, or other emergency, Lord God, those who are in our law enforcement, those who are in our military, and Lord God, for the times whenever there are those who struggle in those contexts, even to know and to do what is right, we ask that you would point them and guide them back to who you are so that they would be inspired by your sacrifice even toward their own. And Lord God, for Tyler, for Shaolin, for Ed, for all of those who serve in these different contexts, for those who serve throughout our world, including Kristen and Kareem and all of those others that we know in our hearts as well as those that we don't know at this time. We ask that you would move them and strengthen them and give them the fortitude, even at a time when it feels like everyone around is distracted with the things that don't matter. Lord God, we thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, 
We thank you that you continue to guide us and to lead us. And Lord God, for the times whenever we feel perplexed and confused, we thank you that you are the one to light our path. Lord, even as you have taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the time whenever we bring our offerings unto the Lord. However God has called or moved you to bring your offerings to God, we invite you to do so at this time. If there is a prayer request that you have that you would like to put on the card that's in front of you, please feel free to do so at this time. Let us know that if you're a guest, let us know that you're here and we'd be happy to connect with you. Uh, we do our best to reach out to everyone each week and to be able to see how it is that they are and to be able to welcome all those in our community. With that, we bring our offerings onto the Lord. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to who you Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal life, death, and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. If you want to see a broken vessel, look at a pastor chanting everlasting life instead of death. There you go. <laughs> but that's the wonderful part, is that it is not about me, and it is not about trying to be perfect. You see, the thing is, is that the sacrifice of Christ is for all. See, 
The night when our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You see, whereas we saw earlier that the showbread was there in the presence of God, what we know is that in Christ Jesus, we know that as we receive this meal, the presence of God is here with us. So for those believing that Christ's sacrifice is for you, and that his presence is here in this eating and in this drinking, we invite you to come forward and to receive this with us. For those of you who need gluten-free, we do have that available on the side. For those of you who need alcohol-free, it is a clear liquid in the center. Let nothing keep you from the presence of our Lord. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. <clears throat> Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We join to sing 807, When Morning Gilds the Skies. <laughs>